Good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's so good to have everyone gather together this morning on uh, this beautiful sunny day. Uh, I'm a little out of breath because I forgot something at home and had to run back. So uh, forgive me if I seem a little more scattered brain than usual. It, uh, I'll, I'll catch up with the rest of you in, in a moment. <clears throat> Just uh, uh, We have a number of announcements this morning. Um, this week at St. John Stevensville, we have a worship committee meeting that is happening on Wednesday morning. If you are on that committee, please note that meeting time. And also that uh, Nimble Thimbles will have their last gathering of the season, also on Wednesday. And I believe that is uh, followed up by lunch. So that should be a good time as well. <coughs> the music team will meet on Thursday. Uh, in the morning, I had scheduled it so that we could meet right after choir, but I hadn't realized there was no more choir, so uh, the music team will be meeting on the Thursday. <coughs> As we kind of go more into the, the summer season, we are going to be looking uh, for some volunteers to help us out as we go out into the community like we have done for the last couple of years. We have our church tent, and we've been at uh, a number of community events to uh, just share about our, our church and all the ministries and uh, programs that we have. There are two particular ones uh, that are coming up that we could use some help at, because it gets to be a long day uh, between uh, Bill and I um, at, a, at the tent. So we would like to have some volunteers join with us uh, at Fort Erie Pride on June 25th and also at Ridge Fest, which is in July, and I think it's July 16th, but I, I, I'm not sure about that, but it is in July. So if you're able to come sit in the tent for, uh, for an hour or two and talk to the community, please uh, talk to Reverend Bill. Um, last week we had talked about our community art and praise uh, program that's coming up in July, and some kind person noted that in all of our flyers, we didn't say where our church was or where it was happening. So we have new flyers that actually say St. John Stevensville and where we're located. So if you would like to take some of those, they're out here. Also, uh, we got an order of books in, The Keys to the Kingdom. Uh, this is the, the book that was written by the Reverend Dr. Brian Brown, who used to be one of the ministers here. And when he was here um, on the annual meeting, he had a copy, <clears throat> hopefully, for, for everyone in the congregation or every family, but we ran a little short. So if you did not get one then, please feel free to pick one up. They are at the back, and they share the story of this particular congregation in, in amongst uh, the stories of other churches across Canada. Also, um, camping season has begun. It was a little, we were a little unsure of whether there was going to be overnight camping at some of the United Church camps, but I guess both um, Hay Springs Camp and Five Oaks are both um, going to have campers for overnight programming this summer. <clears throat> so if you, have, you know someone who would like to go, it's, it's a fairly expensive. It's, it's $475, I think, per camper. We do have some monies available for kids who would like to go, but um, just to help them out financially. So if you know someone, please come see me uh, and we'll work that out. And our own Phyllis work, uh, sits on the board at K-Spring Camp. She's one of the friends of K-Springs. And she has put a list of things that the camp needs this year. Uh, if you would like to have a look at that and, and, and feel the need to donate, please, uh, Please see her. And Susan, you had a, an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the South Niagara Life Center has their baby bottle campaign every year. Uh, it goes from uh, Mother's Day to Father's Day. Um, our church is no longer directly involved with this project. However, if you would like to make a donation, you can contact the South Niagara Life Centre directly. I have their address if you want to see me after church. Thank you.
Good morning. I did check our sign-up list this morning for this week's uh, Food for the Body and for the Spirit. And we do not have anyone as yet signed up to help serve at the Embrace Center on Jarvis Street. So um, if you would think about that and um, check out the list. There are upcoming weeks. We're going to be going with this luncheon right through the month of July. And August, we will be taking a, a bit of a sabbatical. So, and then starting up again in September. So we're always looking for people that would like to donate some of their time. We have a lot of fun in the kitchen. Kay can put her hand up for that one. So uh, looking for, for people to help out. Thank you. As call one another to worship. On this Ascension Sunday, praise the Lord, all people. For our Savior has been raised on high. Jesus Christ, who was crucified and has risen from the dead, now sits at the right hand of God the Almighty. Jesus will come again, bringing the fullness of God's kingdom. Praise be to Amen. Let's uh, raise our voices together as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 567, Will You Come and Follow Me? Remember that the sun must rise in order for the spirit to descend. We are thankful that we are able to gather here as a community, that we are here to, to bless one another and to be blessed. We are also cognizant of the fact that many of our, our numbers are traveling and we ask that wherever they travel, they will be a blessing to those they meet, to those that they that you bring their way. Be with us this morning as we uh, raise our voices and gather our hearts close together for a time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
So I think uh, we only have two young'uns today. Why don't you come on up? And I think Reverend Bill wants to talk to you. <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, this morning's this morning is going to be like really short. The, our, our chat is going to be short. Today is called Ascension Sunday. Do you know what Ascension means? No. It means that something goes up. And so today, we, we, we read the stories about Jesus. So, so we know that Jesus, when he, he lived, and then he died, but then he was raised again, right? Easter. On Easter. So that's what we celebrated a while back. Today, we, we, we think about Jesus being raised up to heaven so that, he, so that Jesus can be right beside God. But Jesus promised that when that happened, that the Holy Spirit would be would would stay around with us, inspiring us and 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 helping us to live our lives in a way that that you know that we learn from Jesus. No, Logan, please don't. So, so that's what we think about today. So we think about Jesus going up to heaven but the the holy spirit is still here with us kind of walking with us and and guiding us and so the hymn that we just sang will you come and follow me is a is a reminder that that even now during our lives we get to we get to follow jesus and to live the life that jesus kind of set before us in the gospels and that means what that means is that we that we look out for each other, we love each other, we love other people, and we do that in a in a way that is that is just without limit, because that's how God loves us. And so now this morning you're going off to Sunday school. I'm not sure what what are they doing in Sunday school? Painting. Oh, you knew that. Okay, what are you doing in Sunday school? Oh, you're painting. Okay, you're painting masks. So, um, have a great time. And, uh, and I know there's only a couple of you, but I'm sure that the conversations will be loud and rich. Okay, off you go. Our psalm for this morning is going to be Psalm 97, and we'll be reading it from Voices United, page 817. God, let the earth be glad, let the islands and coastlands rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness are vital about you. Righteousness and justice, the foundation of your throne. Fire goes before you, consuming your enemies on every side. Your lightnings light up the world, the earth trembles at sight. The mountains melt like wax before you. 
before the sovereign of all the earth. The heavens proclaim your righteousness, and all the people see your glory. Ashamed, all you who worship images, who boast of idols. Bow down before God, all of you gods. Zion hears and is glad. The cities of Judah rejoice, O God, at your judgments. For you are the most high above all here. You are exalted far above all gods. You, O God, love those who who hate evil. You preserve the life of your saints. You deliver them from the hands of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in God, righteous people. Give thanks to God's holy name. And I invite you again to uh, sing, and this song may be new to some of you. It's Creator God, You Gave Us Light. This year, on Ascension Sunday, we hear Luke's telling of the event, where we hear echoes of the road to Emmaus encounter, a reading from Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 
You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. And a second gospel reading from John shares Jesus' share for all believers to be one in spirit and truth. A reading from John 17, 20 to 26. Jesus prays that all may be one. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me be, may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Hear what God is saying to the church through these scriptures today.
think I have a little bit of crush on the, the guy that did the solo. <laughs> I was just, uh, as I was listening to Bill saying it, I was reminded that yesterday, it was 13 years from the first time that, uh, that Bill and I went out and played pool together, and he said, I'm going to marry you. And I thought, that's a little creepy, but here we are. <laughs> So, um, 40 days after Easter is always the Feast of the Ascension, which, which happened last Thursday. And the following Sunday after that is, of course, Ascension Sunday. And I remember this because Pentecost is 50 days after Passover or Easter, and next week is Pentecost, which is one of my favorite days of the Christian calendar. So this Sunday, this Sunday, we retell the story of Jesus uh, ascending, returning to heaven. But before he does that, he blesses the disciples as they await the Holy Spirit to come and anoint them and to birth them into becoming the church. Please pray with me. Loving God, teach us to be the people who bless others. Guide us in the ways we should go. Grant us understanding as we engage the Holy Scriptures this day. Amen. So our reading this morning finishes off the reading of chapter 24 of Luke that we began on Easter Sunday. And the chapter began with, with the women going uh, to, to the tomb to dress the body of Jesus and finding the tomb empty. And then Cleopas and his companion, they meet the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus. And then the risen Christ, he appears to, uh, to the disciples in the upper room. And then uh, Jesus offers them, he, he uh, shows up again and he offers them peace. And this all happens over about a 40-day period. Because then in our reading for today, we hear Jesus bless them and is taken up into heaven. And I love the fact that Jesus, the risen Christ, last act on earth was to bless. From the first moment of the incarnation, uh, Jesus being born as a baby in the beautiful of our Christmas story, to the last moment of the incarnation, Jesus blesses those all around him. And Jesus, throughout his life and ministry, taught others also to bless. There used to uh, uh, be a radio preacher when I was a kid. My mom and dad would listen to this uh, radio program every Sunday, who was on the local station in Truro. And at the end of of uh, the preachers, I think it was the power hour or something like that. Uh, but at the end of each of his broadcasts, he would finish with the words, may God bless you and make you a blessing. Um, if I think about it enough after that was the, where you could, you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. I heard it every, every Sunday of my childhood, so I can probably go through the whole spiel of what the radio calling number is and everything, because it's all mixed together in my head. So, may God bless you and make you a blessing. Now, this particular uh, fellow was very fundamentalist, and he had uh, actually quite the reputation for being very fundamentalist. And even though I probably would have very little in common with him, theologically speaking, what a wonderful way to end your broadcast. May God bless you and make you a blessing. And uh, he died quite some time ago now, but in a weird sort of way, he's still blessing me because that's still in my head. And the Gospel um, of Matthew, which also tells the story of the Ascension, different than the one we read in Luke this morning, it ends with a little bit of extra as well as not just blessed, but in the Matthew version, Jesus gives what we call the Great Commission. 
to go out into all the world and to preach the gospel or to share the good news of the gospel. They have been blessed, and now they were being commissioned to go and be a blessing. That commission in its most purest form is evangelism. Sharing the good news of God's love that can transform lives. Now, evangelism uh, is often uh, a dirty word these days. It's been kind of uh, widely corrupted by harmful practices that, that were designed to coerce rather than an invitation to engage. And if you put the word television in front of the word evangelism, then there are all kinds of connotations of, of hucksters and hustlers, sometimes with loose morals, who are just after your money. Uh, I don't know that that is true across the board, I, I would say it isn't, but that seems to be the connotation that people take when they hear the, the word uh, evangelism, particularly television evangelism. And such a legacy makes ordinary folks nervous about sharing their faith publicly, which is a shame. It is a real heartbreaking shame. Because friends, I believe that we have a faith that is worth sharing. I believe we have a faith that is worth evangelizing. I believe that we follow a, a, a Jesus whose teachings were, were transformative and are transformative. I believe that the risen Christ uh, absolutely absolutely changes lives. And I want my friends and my, my family and those I meet, I want them to know this Jesus for themselves. I want them to be blessed as I have been blessed. I want my friends and my family to then go out and then they themselves be a blessing to others. And I want to see that, that circle of blessing grow and grow and grow. And I want that circle of blessing to be bigger and stronger than the circles of hate that we see in the world. I've also noticed that on Ascension Sunday, the lectionary for this Sunday tends to pair that story with the gospel reading from the Last Supper. And we read that too this morning. The, the prayers that Jesus prayed before his arrest. And in that time, Jesus prays for his followers. And Jesus' prayer for them is not that they're going to have a really easy life that, you know, it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows as they share the gospel. And people will say, oh, wow, that's great. And then they'll want to be really happy. Jesus knows that there are rough times ahead. So instead of praying that they're going to have an easy life, Jesus prays for unity. Because they're going to need each other. And they're going to need to stay close to God. I read an article this week uh, by a minister from the United Methodist Church in the United States, and that denomination is, is going through its own 1988 growing pains. Um, 1988 was the year that, that the United Church um, passed a resolution to ordain gay and lesbians. And like the United Church experience in 1988, there's division within the United Methodist Church. And there's actually quite a bit of division. And we here at St. John Stevensville, uh, we understand that well. When all that happened back at that time, the minister who was here left the church and, uh, and took a, a goodly number of folk with him. But a faithful remnant remained. They stayed and they rebuilt our congregation. And we are blessed by the courage of that faithful remnant. But, but for our, our brothers and sisters who are in the United Methodist Church right now, they're right in the middle of that, that time of transition and emotions are raw. So the article that I read by, by this minister, it re, he reflected that reality within this denomination. 
And he wrote about conversations with a particular colleague who told him that he had never seen the church so divided and, and that he had never seen the nation so divided. And the author's question back to his colleague was, just when was that golden age of unity that he talked about? Because it's good to stop and think and put in perspective that history would tell us there have always been fractions and divisions. Most Christians uh, belong to denominations that were actually created because of divisions. The United Church of Canada represents a, um, a union of denominations, but each of those founding denominations, the Presbyterians, the Methodists, and the Congregationalists, that's a whole different story. Now, there are reasons for different uh, divisions that led to the different denominations, but the point is that division is part of our history and, and part of our present reality. And yet, and yet we keep upholding that Jesus passionately prays for unity between all of his followers. And again, I don't believe that Jesus was, was particularly naive when he prayed that prayer. Actually, I believe just the opposite. I believe that Jesus totally understood the challenges that his followers were going to encounter being the church. Jesus needed his followers to be unified by their love for one another. And it's perfectly okay that Christians are nourished uh, spiritually in different ways. Different liturgies, uh, different styles of music, um, Incense, no incense, uh, clergies with collars and stoles, clergies who wear jeans, it's all good. It's all good. It's even okay to have different doctrinal beliefs. And it's okay to respectfully engage in, in discussions about whether you agree with one another or not. It's even okay at times to state that that you believe that a particular denomination's actions have been unloving or harmful. But even, but even in those situations, whatever you say must be said with love. Because unity is not about being like cookie cutter congregations. It's about loving one another as Jesus loves. It is about remembering that we are all in this together to, to serve and share the gospel. It's about blessing one another and praying that others will in turn uh, bless others and having that circle of blessing grow and grow bigger and stronger, bigger and stronger than the circles of hate. And so on this Ascension Sunday, at the risk of copyright infringement, May the Lord bless you and make you a blessing to everyone whom God brings into your lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is going to be hymn number 603, In Loving Partnership We Come.
forth our gifts and offerings. Our offertory prayer is uh, being offered in two voices. There it goes. Loving God, creator and sustainer, may these gifts be given gratefully, be brought to life through the power of your creative spirit. Multiply and use them Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, as always, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for the rain that fell on the weekend, nurturing the grass and the plant life and, and bringing to life, the flowers in our gardens, the fruits and the vegetables. We thank you for the sunshine that is shining today, the, the warmth that has traveled distant miles to rest upon our shoulders. We thank you that you have called us to be your people in this part of creation at this time and in this place. We thank you for all those who have walked these streets and the trails that preceded them. We thank you for all those who will follow. And we pray that through from generation to generation to generation, we will prove ourselves to be gentle upon this earth. That we will indeed be a blessing to your creation. Life givers. And not purveyors of death. Lord, this morning we come into worship again with, with heavy hearts. We pray for our neighbors to the south, particularly those in the state of Texas, as they deal with yet another mass shooting in another elementary school with more children, more teachers, their names added to an ever-lengthening list.
And at the same time, we continue to pray for our neighbors just across the river in Buffalo as they, as they continue to mourn the mass shooting from last week, burying the last of the victims yesterday. And we pray for ourselves as we hear the news that here in Canada, gun deaths are on the increase, crimes, include, crimes that, that include firearms are, are also on the increase, the number of guns in our streets are on the increase. And we come to you, the Prince of Peace, searching for a direction. We know that that the events south of the border we have no control over, and so we can only offer prayers and, and thoughtful support. But here in our own nation, we do have we do have a little bit more power. And so as we prepare here in Ontario to go to the polls, we pray that the, that the gospel, the gospel agenda, the agenda that calls for peace and justice and compassion will guide our hearts and our minds as we check off that box. We pray for our leaders, no matter which party and no matter where they might reside. We pray that they will hear the challenge, the challenge to find a more peaceful and compassionate and just way of being together. And so we pray for the government that is leaving and the government that will come in in a few days. And we continue to pray for our, national, our federal government, for governments around the world, as, as violence is all the more pervasive. But we know in our heart of hearts that violence is not the answer. And then we bring it back a little closer, and we pray today for those gathering in Houston, Texas, just a couple of hours, just a couple of hours from that mass shooting, as the leadership of the National Rifle Association gathers, we pray for, for common sense. We pray for, for laws that make it just a little bit more difficult to access those arms. A little bit more difficult to transport them. A little bit more difficult to get ammunition for them. Because with every incremental step, we know that lives are saved. And we pray for the day. We pray for the day when nobody feels the need to have firearms in their home for protection. Because we live in a society where all are concerned for their neighbor and for the least among us. Lord, you know there are multitude of prayers on our hearts right now. You know that we, we hold in, in prayer our brother Bill, our sister Fran, others in our congregation who are dealing with health issues, others who are dealing with, with loss of home, with not knowing where the next meal comes from, with outfitting their children for the summer. You know those prayers before we speak them. And we know that you hear them 
and in your hearing you answer them, and we commit ourselves anew. On this day, Ascension Sunday, when you blessed us to be a blessing, we offer ourselves as the answer to the prayers we speak, knowing that often that answer is found in the work of our hands, in the raising of our voices, and the lifting of our hearts. We bring these prayers before you, offering them to you with the words that Jesus offered first to us as a model for all prayer, as we boldly sin. Before our benediction, we are going to raise our voices in song again, singing together, Be Thou My Vision, number 642 in Voices United.
folks, just a reminder that we have returned to uh, coffee time as a community, so hopefully you'll be able to stay and, and enjoy some time of fellowship with one another. But before we do that, I invite you to bless one another with our benediction. Go into God's world to share what we have. Go into God's world to share who we are. Go into God's world with God's love, Christ's peace, and the Holy Spirit's song. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Amen.